Yay, it's working again. I uh, have been trying for like five minutes to get uh, my live video going and yay, it's finally working. So hi everybody, so sorry for the mishaps today. My power went out and um, it's back on, thank goodness. Um, then I tried starting another one and We Energies called. <laughs> and wanted me to press one if my power was on and I couldn't while I had the video going. So I wound up ending that. And so anyway, here we are. And um, this demo lesson is about line and wash. A lot of things can fall into this category. It might be a catch-all, but I guess really it's, it's, um, it's kind of a um, genre unto itself. Usually watercolorists uh, do line and wash, but you can use acrylic paints and you definitely would want to use um, fine line markers and a, in a variety of weights um, that are permanent and archival and won't run when you put water on them. So like this one here is by, this set that I bought is by Derwent and Line Maker is the name of it. It was a set of five of them, I think. It says super fine, free flowing, permanent liners. And uh, I really do like these a lot. It's ideal for drawing and writing. And the microns are good too, but I find with the microns, I almost have to hold them very vertical to get them to work. These have a nib that protrude out and allow you to kind of hold it from the side. And I'll show you what I mean by that. I'm gonna turn the camera down and talk a little bit about line, and then I'm gonna talk about wash, and then how we can combine them together in a lesson. So let me, let me do that. Turn the camera down. Hi, hi Tammy. <laughs> thank, you for, thank you for coming. Uh, sorry about, you know, not getting, not being able to get on sooner. So real quickly, since I just mentioned that about the fine liners, and I'm sure you all have, you know, markers like this. Um, the microns were always my favorite. Like here's, here's a, I have a sketch pad here. This is just by Canson. And um, so this one is a point three, a point one, point one by Derwent. And what I like about it is that I can literally hold it on the side and get really, I'm holding it, you notice I'm holding it on the end. Oh, Tammy, you're so sweet. And I just like, um, here's my jar, of, my jar of smoothie right here. I like being able to do these continuous line drawings. Here's my, the straw coming out. My smoothie, my green smoothie I started drinking since I was waiting. Here it says ball. <laughs> But you know, that's kind of cool. And this one's really, really fine. So you don't see too much, but you can, you can, um, you can do a really rough, loose drawing. And then these lines are gonna basically really disappear. But what this does is it, it helps you to loosen up and it helps you to um, draw. And like here, this one's a point two now. So I can come back in and, you know, maybe, maybe I'll just refine this a little bit more now that I feel just a little bit more comfortable. I've got some rough lines down on there and I can kind of see where, you know, where this lid part is of the jar. And then this comes out like this. You know, and it's, it's still really rough, but um, 
it's it's not that bad it's it's on there it's pretty good actually here's the straw um, you know I can come back in and really refine these lines a little bit more if I want to um, you know or whatever here's the my green sludge it's right about here maybe this is where the highlight would be And then for a wash, I can come in. This is a very quick thing here. I'm going to go into a more full-on lesson in a second. But I can come in here and put my color in here. This is just sketch paper, so it's not going to look that great. I'm going to retain that highlight. All right. Somehow I got green all over this thing and I actually even have a green straw. <laughs> so there's like a green everywhere. If I paint through the highlight, it's really not a big deal because I can come back in with a white pencil or a white marker. That's something I love to do and draw the highlight in later. So this looks really strange, this green. <laughs> but it's loose, it's fun, and the more you do, the better you're gonna get. And it's fresh. The more you do this sort of thing, the better you're gonna get at it. And it's a way to um, just get into your art self and not get too bogged down, you know, just to, to you know, get something done. To exp it's, it's expressive, you know, this was my, this is my lunch. So anyway, uh, my point is these are um, permanent line markers. You're going to need to get yourself some of these if you don't have them already. Sharpies will work. Sharpies tend to really bleed through quite a bit. Um, so I would suggest um, something like these or even the microns. Um, all right, so this was um, sketch paper and you can see it, it, it really wasn't too bad. It's not too badly wrinkled. Um, you can also do these on drawing paper. Um, you don't have to um, use watercolor paper to do these quick little studies like this, okay? So this is still wet, so I'm gonna set it aside. And I'm going to show you some other examples of line and wash. And I've got, I've got quite a variety of things that I can show you, things that I've done in some different sketchbooks. So here, this is just wash. These are, it's just watercolor washes. I had taped the sides and it's just a landscape. I never went back in and added any line to it, but I could. I could certainly do that. I could, I could draw little houses in here and tree trunks and uh, who knows what all, just horizontal lines. And I'm gonna show you that um, as part of this lesson. For now, I'm just showing you different examples of things. Here's another one. This is just watercolor washes on this, in this sketchbook. These are more watercolor washes. I wrote, this sucks, I was in a mood. <laughs> um, basically, what they're watercolors. They're just little, they're watercolors. That's what all of this is. Different washes, right? And I hung up on them. Um, you know, most of the time with watercolors, we're not even going to add line from a permanent line marker or a fine liner. We're just going to leave it as is. Um, but sometimes coming in with line can really be a cool technique. Um, all right, so those were just washes in there. Now here's something I did at the Bot Chicago Botanic Garden quite a while ago. And I took my time with this. This was a plein air painting. And um, to be honest, I don't remember what I did first. I, from the looks of it, it looks like I did, yeah. 
it looks like I did the line art first. And you can see I used a fine liner. I actually even see some pencil right there. So I must have drawn it in pencil, erased. Then I went in with my fine liner and I did squiggly lines and straight lines and um, some areas like back here in the distance, there are no lines. I, I kind of planned that that would just be washes. I knew I was going to have washes with my lines, but um, what, what this does is it helps you think in terms of what areas can I leave alone, you know? And this is something I told myself wasn't finished, but you know what? I actually like how unfinished it looks. I actually like it. This is a bench that I didn't paint in, but I like the fact that it's empty, you know? So, I mean, I had kind of thought that I needed to go back in and do more to it. Oh, thanks, Tammy. But you know what? Sometimes you don't always need to do more to it, especially when you're using line with your with your watercolor washes. Um, this is I, probably the same day. I'm not sure. This is something that um, uh, you know. I don't feel real great about this, but what the heck? It's okay. It's just a bunch of. It's, it was just a big field of flowers, and I did do some line. And then I went in with my washes and I didn't really control them real well and kind of gave up on it, which is fine. That's okay. Um, here's something where I did, it looks like I drew in pencil and then I used, uh, I think like an India ink and a brush. And so that's line. Now this is permanent when you use India ink. So I could come back in and add washes to this. That might be a really fun thing to do you might discover that you like doing lines first and adding washes later or maybe with some subjects it might make sense to do the washes first and let it dry totally and then add the line and you should try different ways um okay and then this i don't know what this is remember this is a sketchbook so um I guess I was just doing all kinds of silly things. Here's some cat drawings. Um, not much in here. This is this is acrylic and abstract testing out stuff. Okay, so that's all that's in here. So we're looking for line and wash examples. Um, <clears throat> This is a really nice size. I actually really like this. This is a, um, it's called uh, Original Classic Watercolor Cache by Daler Rowney, and it's approximately five by seven, the size of this, but I like the spiral. Um, so it's an easy to travel type journal. It's easy to travel with this. So here you can see, this might have been, again, the same day at um, Chicago Botanic Garden. And you can see that I have some pencil lines. This was a little urn of flowering plants with some trees behind. And um, I actually, you know, started drawing it. It looks like I didn't finish it, but you know what? I kind of like the fact that <laughs> it's unfinished. I really can see coming in and doing, wetting this whole thing and putting some soft greens and pinks in here and and it would be done you know i i i really do um i really can see that so i think if you need more accuracy and for placement doing the line art first is what's going to help you on the other hand for something like these these flowers these are just like five petal flowers i did the flowers washes in watercolor first and I can come back in um, with my fine liners and decide where I want to add line. Um, and these are just different. Okay, so that's all that's in that uh, journal. So let me see, I've got one more here. And then I've got a bin with some things. So here is a watercolor wash uh, and line art of looking out my front window. And this is hot press paper. So I just wanted to do a quick, you know, study to get a feel for the pr hot press paper. And um, 
it, it's actually kind of whimsical and simple, but you know what? It was, it was fun. The main, you know, a lot of times in your journal, you just want to have fun. You, you know, you don't really, you're not going to really show anybody. <laughs> Here's another one where I spent a little bit more time uh, doing a, a rendering of my house. This is from 2013. Our house two years after some landscaping. The blue spruce is about 11 to 12 feet tall now. Notice the shutters are starting to look faded. Well, we finally got the house, the shutters painted this summer, this past, this past year, and here it is 20, in 2020, we had that done. But anyway, um, this is, you know, line art. And obviously I did the line art first and came back in with my paint brush and painted in, you know, all these shutters and shadow area of the front porch and all of that. So it depends on your subject whether or not you need to do the line art first. Uh, here Again, here's more line art. And when you're using hot press paper, you can get really nice clean lines that are very scannable. And I know you, in, in this group, we don't necessarily talk about scanning line art, but, you know, or, and water, scanning our art, but, um, you never know. Someday you might want to start scanning your work and you can edit it in, um, in Photoshop and, you know, put it on licensing and all kinds of things. So just a few more things I want to show you. I know you guys have probably been seeing these that I've done. These are the teapots on um, drawing paper quickies that I've been doing for social media to get some Instagram stories up and things like that. And um, I have really been having a great sense of accomplishment from these. Um, this one was on drawing paper. I decided to put it on a card, you know, as is this size and with some washi tape in the corners and stuck it in this sleeve. And I can sell this as a hand painted original card, you know. Um, let me get this in here, back in the sleeve. This one was on regular copy paper. And um, I couldn't do too many washes on it, just a, just a little bit. And this might be a fun challenge for you. Um, it, it forces you to not put too many washes down. Too much water on this copy paper would have ruined it. And then I went back in after it was dry and used a gold paint pen. On it so you can't really see it too much on camera but it's actually pretty cute here's another one I did um, let's see here's another example of uh, and this is a watercolor um, yeah I think this is watercolor but it's it's line and watercolor washes uh, you know just a, a floral Let's see, what else have I got? So there's so many different ways you can, you can do this. Here's another one. Um, I think that when I did this one, I did the washes first. I painted these flowers and leaves. Then I came back in with a background peach wash to outline the, the original shapes. And then as a final step, I added the lines with my fine liner. Okay, so that, I think that's really, you know, everything I wanted to show you. Let's see, I'm just looking through my bin here right now. See if there's any other examples in here. Um, not really. Okay, so what I thought I would do for today's, uh, you know, demo is to... Um, Take something that I that I did a wash where I painted some washes down. Painted some washes down. Does that even make sense? So here's one. Yeah, florals in line and wash. And you know, um, I'm glad you've done several of them like that, Tammy. That's great. You might want to explore other subjects. I mean, I don't know if you like doing cityscapes, but really linear things. Think about really linear things with straight lines like a cityscape or something like that 
um, since you're using, um, you know, a, a line, a bra, you know, a marker, it kind of lends itself to more linear artwork. Um, did I, what did I do with those? Oh, like these, I just did, you know, like this is definitely more linear. It's just a, you know, a sh like a shabby old house. <laughs> um, or this, this little coffee maker. Um, you know, it also works well. This technique works well for doing people, doing faces, um, doing, you know, still life, everyday objects, things like this. You know, so works for just about anything, really. Um, and if you Google line and wash, you will find so many people. Oh, there, there's just, you know, gorgeous stuff out there. Um, here was something that I did when I was waiting for the power to come back on. <laughs> this was just watercolor only, and I went in and outlined it. I used um, on here, I used the wrong kind of marker, and it bled. I used my Tombow marker, so that was not a good idea. So I forgot that my Tombow markers are not waterproof, so that's gonna happen. Um, all right. But that's okay. So here's one that I did that is a, you know, just a, a farmhouse. I shared this photo this morning. It's not a farmhouse, it's a barn. <laughs> and it's a really wide format. So I actually had some watercolor paper in this super wide format. And I just went ahead and painted, painted in some washes and now I'm ready to do the line part. So I'm gonna show you that. I think this point, well, you know what, yeah, let's, let's start with this really smallest one, this point three. Actually, I guess the point one is even smaller, but I'm gonna start with this, this one here. And I can decide how much or how little I want to use, how much line I want in this, I don't have to be a sub, I don't have to be, I don't have to do everything. For instance, these washes where the trees fade up into the sky, I think I wanna just leave the distant ones as is. Maybe the ones that are closer, I will, I'll, I'll draw in a little bit more. So for instance, let's go in and do that right here. There is this kind of um, yellow tree right here that's in front of the green ones. So I'm gonna go come in and kind of outline that one. And I'm gonna do just kind of squiggly lines. And you don't have to, you know, do every single line, but just, you know, um, squiggly lines I'm putting in trying to be real descriptive in case Trish is listening. She was gonna try and listen on the road today. Maybe every once in a while, I'm gonna show the, um, the branches. So right there, that's a really simple way of doing a, um, a tree, right? Maybe right here, I can kind of see there being, maybe there's another one here. that I can kind of force in here and then put a trunk with it. And that's enough to tell the story. And um, okay, let's come over here. I'm gonna go start on the barn too. You know, you just look at your reference. Sometimes you can kind of get away with stuff you didn't paint in real accurately and clean it up a little bit. Because you're coming back in with this it can really kind of help.
And you'd be surprised, you know, less, less is more with this sort of thing. The white X's on the barn doors, I can paint in with a white, uh, a white marker, a white paint pen, I mean, I mean to say. <laughs> Okay, so let's see. There's kind of two things here. Right about here is where that window is. And then here's the barn doors. And you kind of start to develop a little bit of technique like here I'm flicking, I'm not gonna paint, I'm not gonna draw all of the wooden slats. I'm just gonna choose where I want to show them and I'm gonna have them kinda pull down from the shadow area like that. Um, okay, the barn door itself is about here and here. And I'm gonna put the uh, barn doors in in black and then I'm gonna paint over him with my white paint pen later all right and of course we know when we're when we want to depict um, land we want horizontal lines so you can literally just kind of do these lines that are kind of scratchy and then have a little squiggle indicating maybe a few grass blades or something um, here and there, you don't need much. All right, now the big important part about this is going to be the, uh, I can add more shadow in here, it kind of looks like I'm gonna need more shadow. I can do a cross hatching shadow, or I could paint, I could have painted that in. All right, so I'm gonna look for places where I could maybe have um, the trunk of the tree every once in a while showing through. Just here and there. And then the big thing um, is gonna be getting this fence in here. But I kinda wanna have just more of a hint of a um, horizon line back there. Okay, and I'm gonna have it fade out as we get over here to this side. I think I want just a little bit more detail over here. I could get really a lot more detailed here to bring out my barn. So I'm just gonna put some vertical lines in to kind of give a hint of the trunks of some trees. And honestly, that might, that really might be enough. So some lines are just gonna kinda get lost. All right, and then I think I might just use a thicker marker to put my fence in, my fence posts. So um, I think the thickest I have is this 0.5, and I do, I can still see my pencil lines in there. Um, let's see, is this the first one? Yeah, so I think the first one is over here. So 
So I'm drawing in all my vertical posts. And I'm simplifying the split rail fence intentionally. Even though it's got like four crossbars, I don't want to have to draw four crossbars. So I made it just two. Oh, this is actually way too fine. I, I grabbed the wrong one. The 0 0.05 is the finest yet. That's not what I meant to grab. There, I meant to grab the 0.5. I, I guess I'm easily confused by that sort of thing. I was wondering, like, why is this so... <laughs> why is this taking so long? It's way too fine of a line. And the... The fence is actually pretty important on here. It really leads the eye. Yep, I like it, I like it. Hopefully you can see this. Tammy says she loves the shabby old house. I mean, I could paint these in. This marker seems to be getting just a little bit dry. But, you know, why not use the marker? And, and sometimes, you know, you have to decide between painting in a line or drawing in a line, depending on you know how much emphasis you want it to have. Maybe over here it'll become a little bit looser. And, um, Let's see, you could use white gouache to paint it in the, uh, the barn lines, or I'm just gonna use this white paint pen. Okay. Um. <clears throat> it's giving a little bit of a highlight to the um, couple of the fence posts just for the heck of it. The other thing you could do is it, you know, put with this white paint pen, put a little bit of a path in here. You know, why not? And then sometimes it's nice to add some, like maybe these are some um, uh, weeds coming up that actually kind of violate the background. It really gives that sense of foreground when you do that. I don't know if you can see that. So I'm drawing these really tall um, weeds coming into the um, the painting and actually even overlapping 
the background. So I need to let that dry. I can come back in and add black outline around that or whatever. And I mean, I can continue doing that too if I want. You know, maybe it's like Queen Anne's lace or something. So I did another one over here in the middle. It kind of helps point to, to the subject also. Um, the other thing I could do is come back in and add some um, tree holes here and there. Right? So that's kind of fun. All right, Let's see if these are drying. So now with my really small marker, I can come in and just, you know, maybe just give a little bit of emphasis to a couple of these guys. that we added. You know, not all of them. Actually, what would be even better would be to use a, um, a colored marker of some sort. If you had a colored permanent marker so now these over here that I added are kind of hard to see. That's pretty good. So it's very simple, very casual. I mean, you know, it's not even really that well done, but that's okay. I, I really don't mind. All right, so that's just an example of um, doing the wash first and adding the lines after. Now, let's find something where we did the lines first. Um, Sure, I got something. Oh, here's the other one I did. I did it. I did it. Um, I did it really loose this morning. Just, I did it the first time on this one. Um, well, what if we did that right here? Let's do the same thing, doing the lines first. You know, why not? And see see what the difference is for us. So I am, you know, I am a little bit familiar with it because I've drawn it a couple of times now. Um, but let's go ahead and, this is probably on the wrong side of the paper, but that's okay. Um, all right, so let's draw this barn. Start off with that line.
So I'm just drawing in my fence here. I'm being really loose. Okay, and maybe what I'm gonna do on this one is kinda draw the trees in a little bit more. <coughs> you know, really get these trunks in here. There is a house back here. I could, I suppose I could, you know, sketch, sketch that in a little bit. Just a hint of some windows here and there. But you know, there's, there's trees in front of it. So I'm doing just really quick, loose, big trees coming up. Kind of evergreen feel to them. And then there are some that are, like this one's a more uh, rounded, this yellow tree is not an evergreen, so I'm gonna do the lines differently. More curvy and rounded. There's also one over here. And then there's a couple of, um, You, know, you could do bushes too. You know, and maybe they become outlines in the distance. And you know, you don't have to be a slave to your reference either. You could decide to totally change the shape of all those trees if you wanted to. So now I'm gonna put um, some horizontal lines to help break up this big space. And um, that's probably it. That's probably pretty good. Oh, no problem, Tammy, if you're gonna catch it later. I understand. Oh, there is a little bit of um, like a base, beigey area to this. And I'm just gonna put some here and there vertical lines of the uh, barn in here. Okay. So there's my lines. I think that's, an, well, maybe I should continue these, this fence. 
kind of looks like it needs it. Okay, <laughs> very loose. I got really loose over there. All right, but that's good. You want to be loose with these. Let yourself have fun with this. Okay, so now we're going to come in with our washes. So I'm going to grab my watercolors here. You could use any paints that you want. Just use something to thin them. These should be thin, transparent washes that you add and um, so that the lines will still show. And you can experiment using, you know, uh, a flat or a round. See what, see what different results you get. Um, you never know, right? So, I'm, but I'm going to use a round. Okay, I need to get my water closer to my. paints there. Okay, so we're going to start with our lighter washes first. And I'm going to do like a raw sienna yellow, raw sienna and lemon yellow. And just kind of loosely like with the belly of the brush lay in You know, this big kind of massive area of grass, starting with my lights there. And now I'm gonna pick up some sap green. And again, I'm turning the brush on its side and using the belly of the brush mostly. Kind of need a lot of Paint to do this big of an area. That looks pretty good. And then what I want to do is pull those washes up into this, um, uh, what leads into that foresty area. And it's going to be a little bit darker in through here. So I'm going to mix up my color and I'm using like a sap green and like a burnt umber so that it gets, you know, a little bit darker. And I'm going to start over here. And let it touch the previous wash that I just laid down. So this is a big area we're doing all at once, so I really have to work very quickly. And I definitely want this to change as I go. Some of them, some of these trees are a little redder, a little yellower, so I'm gonna grab, like this was that yellow, right? And I'm just kind of dotting it in there. And then maybe I'll pick a, a kind of a cool green and I'm going to try and use some thicker colors here and there, too. And I'm really working quick, and it's forcing me to be really loose. And it's, it's actually a good thing to leave holes. in some of these areas of the trees. All right, let's get a little more bluish maybe, or even some purple in there. You know, your blues and your purples will really give you those darks. So over here, this edge started to dry. So let me, let me get back in there and do something to that before it gets really too late. Okay, and then a more yellowy green.
as I get over here, I really want it to be lighter and just not as important. Okay, so to bring the attention back over here, we're gonna do that by adding, you know, some darks and pure color. So I'm gonna use some purple in here. And right away that really brings the attention over here to the, to the barn. I also like splattering. I'm gonna put some splatters in there. Maybe even some red violet back in here with some of these trees. Oh yeah, I like what that did. The red violet will also be picked up in the barn. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and put the shadow side of the barn in since I got red violet on my brush. And then I'm gonna grab some red. I can't, I gotta be careful that I don't go into my background. Now I'm using pure red here. Um, I didn't do that on my other ones. It's bleeding into the purple, so let me see if I can pull some of that out. Let's use some um, yellow orange in here too, just to create some variation. So yeah, just because it's red doesn't mean you have to use, you know, straight up red. Putting in some thicker paint too now. So even though it's a red barn, I used yellow and purple in my red barn just for some variation. Down at the bottom of the barn, there seems to be a like a band of a light color, which I'm gonna have to, I guess, really add that in when it dries. You know, and keep in mind, it's going to dry with watercolor. It's gonna dry darker. So make sure you got it dark enough. While I have this red um, on my brush, I'm just gonna see if there's any places I might, you know, add it in for the heck of it. I'm kind of wishing I hadn't done that. And then the last, really the last thing I need to paint in as far as my washes go, I like the, some of the white that's being left there. I'm gonna to need to paint in this roof, which basically is a purple, a very pale um, blue will read as metal, a very pale, cool, bluish purple. It's really pretty white over here. Yeah, I like it. I am liking it. I think I'm liking it because it's really pretty clean and simple. I might do just a little bit of um, dry brush sap green right here. Yeah. So that I can get that light foundation of the barn in there in a minute when that, when that dries. So let 
in this right here. Okay, yeah, I like this one. And I, ne I didn't even paint the sky in, in blue. I don't think I need to. So um, I would let this dry. I mean, I could get my shadow a little bit darker in there now that I'm looking at this. Hold on, let's get a nice dark shadow. There and there. And then also here. And here. Those shadows are really important. Yeah, that helped a lot. Okay. And really, I have, oh, I forgot the steeple. I forgot the red on the steeple, so let's get that in there. Whoopsies. Oh, my shadow is bleeding a little bit here. Uh, it wasn't quite dry enough. All right, so there is your example of doing the line first and adding the wash after. And, you know, it's not all that different, um, but I guess it's different because I, did, I took a different approach. Uh, the last step this needs is the black fence put in, which I'm gonna do with marker and the white the white crossbars, X's on the barn. And I might do another layer of red, but let's set that aside. And let me look for maybe one more thing to, um, to paint. Let's see what, what I find first. How about this? This is just a bunch of washes that uh, I don't even know what I, what reference I was looking at for this, but I just want to show an example of how you can come back in with line on something like this. Okay, and you know, you can use different weights. Um, I, I tend to use the really a finer point first. So let's say we're going to do like some stylized um, clouds. Let's do that. So I'm actually gonna just outline, you know, some clouds in here. Why not? And then here are some trees coming in. So I'm kind of outlining those now. And it just starts to take shape quite a bit more. So then this is looks like this is some land areas. So we definitely wanna have some horizontal lines. Maybe these are some bushes. One thing that happens is sometimes these markers start to just get a little bit dry. You know, and maybe, maybe something can be a little house in the distance. You know, you never, you never know, right? Maybe that was a little house over there. Um, okay, and then um, this stuff here. <laughs> I don't know, I guess it's gonna be a bunch of like 
foliage. Let me get a thicker marker since it's closer to us. Oh, this was the thicker marker. So, um, you know, maybe these are actual, I don't know, blades of some kind of weird grass. You know, and here's more of them. I don't know why, but I'm just following, you know, these, these lines that I've got here. Okay, so that's, it does pull it together and help it um, have a little bit more, it tells the story just a little bit more. And of course you can always come back in and add more paint layers to this too, depending on, on the medium. I could totally see coming in here maybe with gouache and um, painting those clouds back in again, you know. It kind of forces you to be really loose. Um, like this, I could totally draw a boat on here, right? Or, you know, let's do some flowers now. Maybe on this one, we'll draw some flowers in here. I'll try this point too and see how that works. You know, and you don't have to draw exactly where the paint is. You can, you can kind of change it up and um, change the line a little bit if you want to. I kind of feel like the lines um, really do help. Charlie is snoring, sorry. So yeah, I actually, yeah, I, I like it a little bit better now that I have those lines in there. Uh, 
her. You know, and then maybe there are places where you can have another dimension of line, like an even thicker line, or even a brush, uh, brush tip pen, where the lines can become thick and thin. Maybe that's a better way to go. Maybe I went a little too crazy with this, I don't know. But it sure is fun to, um, you know, to experiment with it. And, um, and then there might be times where you want to come back in and add, add a little bit more with your washes. So I hope that you will experiment with this. Um, we're gonna be doing one of these every month. And um, this was just kind of an intro. So definitely, if you have any questions, um, please post your questions below. And I'm happy to uh, you know, share any of the stuff that I used here today. Um, let me see if I can go back to our barn and add the white in. with the paint pen. Sometimes you can even use white um, pencil on top of areas too. All right, so here's my reference. And I posted a tip for the week about uh, reference. It's really important to always use a reference, you guys. It's gonna make a huge difference in your work. Oh yeah, that helped that a lot. So this part here where I kind of don't have the base that I need, I'm gonna go ahead and put white in and I can add my beige foundation base later. Um, you know, I could even put, I don't like what that did. 
Almost looks like there's lines like this on here. And let's add in our fence posts. So I feel like there needs to be just a little bit of, you know, black on the barn itself. Since I have those black um, the black fence, so powerful. Yeah, there we go. I think if I were to put black in the background, it's gonna be just too strong, so I'm gonna stop myself. <laughs> but anyway, that's it. Um, I saw your tip, good one. How about the use of Stabilo Woodies? Yeah, oh, that's a great idea. I do have some, I gave them to my grandkids. They're kind of, those are a little bit waxy, but they should lay on top of this. I would imagine they'd lay on top of this just fine. Okay, good, I didn't know you were, you were back already, Tammy. So anyway, here's this one. This one was the one I did um, the lines first and then the wash, okay? And, um, oh, is this still wet? I wanna turn it over. And then this is the one where I did the washes first and added the lines after. So, you know, who's to say what's better? I mean, and, and you know, it just depends on, on the subject too. So, and you know, the nice thing about it is these you can do so quick that you can do several of them and get really loose, you know, and try different techniques. And, uh, oh, I want to show you something else. I actually, <laughs> while my power was out, I, uh, you know, it, it, I think it's really, for me, I really like painting on things that I'm not going to worry about. Oh, this watercolor paper is so expensive. So try try doing these kinds of things on drawing paper with just a, a really not too many washes. This might actually be really good for you, Tammy, in particular, because you can't go in with too much water and too many washes, and that's gonna help you to not overwork your, your work. So I did these on, <laughs> am I on the right way? I did these on file folders, right? How cool is that? Wait, I have to. I always have to hold something up that that you have to read to be able to know if I have it, the camera the right way. Uh, this doesn't have the Derwent logo on it. Hold on. Sorry, I'm being weird right now. No, the camera is backwards. So, is that this one? Yeah. So, okay. Now it's the right way. It just looks better. So this is on file folders. I mean, from the Dollar Tree, cheapy file folders. The co <laughs> These are like stock flowers, I guess you could call them. But, um, and then here's another one. I really like how these turned out, actually. I really do. But I think that sometimes I can get looser and have more fun when it's a cheapy thing like this. 
Yeah, they are quick. They are quick to do. I actually stopped doing them because I thought it looked like more illustrative art. I wasn't sure how it would be received. Oh gosh, I have noticed Urban Sketchers are sketching. I mean, this isn't really sketching necessarily, but um, it's huge right now. It's a huge, huge surge in it. And it is kind of illustrative, but there's nothing wrong with that. I don't think it's gonna be received as less than in any way. I really don't. You know, um, it's, it's legitimate art making. <laughs> I wouldn't let that stop you. Um, because it's a great warm up and from these kinds of things, if you wanna go all in and do a more intensive full on painting, you can. But the more you do of these, the better you get at drawing and loosening up. So yeah, I would do them. I'm gonna be doing them. I, I, I tell you, I have a strong sense of accomplishment from them. It's actually, I think it's helping my self-esteem. I really do. I really do. How does this look? Kind of, uh. <laughs> so that's it for today's uh, demo and lesson. And for sure, post any questions that you've got. Um, you know, maybe time yourself on these. Challenge yourself to do a variety of different things. You know, like, um, you know, not just flowers, things that are more subjective, like a, fl a flower, no one's gonna know what the flower really looks like. But if you make yourself do a tea kettle, you know, or a face or a house, you know, or, you know, an object like this, um, it's going to kind of get you to refine your skills quite a bit more, which is what we all need to be doing. So, Yay, I'm glad you're gonna get back to them, Tammy. Great, 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 great. I mean, I would say challenge yourself to spend a month doing them and see how you feel at the end of that month. See how many of these little guys you could bang out. And by the way, these, these you can sell these, you know, um, or give them away. I mean, I mean, really, this is really cute. Put this in a frame. I mean, this is what people are selling on Instagram. So what if it's on drawing paper? So anyway, that's it. Um, all right, have a great day. Let me know if you've got any questions, just post them below. And um, these are also fun things for you to share on your social media when you need stuff to share. Why I'm here to get better. Why I'm here to get better, yeah. <laughs> exactly, Tammy. All right. Have a great day, everybody. Do these, challenge yourself to do a couple of these a day because uh, they can be done pretty quickly and post them on your social media and see what happens. All right, bye.